All-Pro wide receiver Tyreek Hill had played less than a quarter of football this year because of his week one shoulder injury, but Hill made his return in the big showdown against the Texans. This is a matchup of two of the best quarterbacks in the NFL, Patrick Mahomes and Deshaun Watson. Early on, the Texans jump a free play for Mahomes, and he fires it down the field. Tyreek Hill leaps in the air between two defenders and pulls in the incredible 46-yard touchdown. 7-0 Chiefs. Take another look at this. Wow. Hello, Sports Center Top 10. Another tough game for the Chiefs offensive line, though. Mahomes takes several big hits and tweaks his ankle injury. Again, after a first quarter, the Chiefs score 17 points. Mahomes would limp around that wasn't 100% for most of the game. He also had two costly second quarter turnovers, but Mahomes regroups in the third quarter. Mahomes to Hill for his third touchdown pass of the game. Two of them go to Hill, who's clearly fine as he celebrates with a backflip. But for the first time all year, Mahomes throws under 300 pass yards. Fourth quarter, Texans down one. Deshaun Watson on the run, and he's in for the one yard TD. He had three total touchdowns, two coming on the ground. Then the Texans add the two point conversion. The now four and two Chiefs lose back to back home games for the first time since 2013. The Texans take it 31 24. Yeah, if I felt like my ankle was affecting the, the team and, and the success of, of the offense, I would for sure uh, uh, move on. But uh, at the same time, I feel like I'm still moving around. I'm still able to run, scramble, uh, throw. And uh, I mean, we just we just haven't executed a high enough, uh, high enough success rate as offense. Another tough game for the Chiefs defense too. Casey gave up 192 rushing yards. 116 to Carlos Hyde, who the Chiefs traded to Houston just before the season started. A short week for Kansas City. The Chiefs play in Denver on a Thursday night. For the first time all year, the Mizzou Tigers are ranked in the AP Top 25 poll. After a 38-27 homecoming win over Ole Miss, Mizzou moves to 5-1 and came in at number 22 in today's AP poll. The Tigers played in front of 62,600 21 fans. It's the first time Memorial Stadium has been at capacity since 2014. Kelly Bryant's coming off a knee sprain injury with Sharp finishing with 329 passing yards and a touchdown. All three running backs found the end zone. Tyler Beatty had a TD catch, while Larry Roundtree rushed for 126 yards and two scores. And Dawson Downing picked up his first career touchdown. A balanced offensive game for Mizzou with more than 300 passing yards and 200 rush yards. It helps when you can run the ball when you want to and throw the ball um, whenever you want to. So, you know, just good, you know, that everybody was executing, you know, we play at a high level. I've been talking about versatility this whole, since since spring, man. Like, that, that's that's big, you know. Again, they don't know if you're going to run, they don't know if you're going to throw, so they got to play you honest. When that happens, big plays happen. Florida and Georgia both lost on Saturday, so at 2-0, Mizzou's the only SEC East team that's undefeated in conference play. After five straight home games, the Tigers finally hit the road. They'll play next Saturday at 3 p.m. against 1-5 Vanderbilt. Jefferson City High grad Sarah Lubert and the Mizzou soccer team hosting Tennessee in a pink out. The Tigers looking for their first SEC win. Scoreless late in the game and Lubert with a good ball to Jalissa Cisneros. And check out this perfect finish for the 1-0 lead. Then Cisneros returns the favor with a nice touch to Lubert, who would be in on goal right here. And she gets just enough on it to beat the keeper for her 28th goal in her Mizzou career. That's the eighth best in program history. Mizzou wins 2-0. More college soccer and NIA men's action. The defending champs and number one nationally ranked Central Methodist sets a school record with 14 goals. The Eagles get the shutout on senior day. And the eighth ranked CMU ladies soccer team also beat Clark 5 to 2. A 10 run first sparked a 13 run effort for the Cardinals in game five of the NLDS in the win over the Braves. But since then, the bats have gone ice cold. St. Louis has just two hits against the national starters in the first two games of the NLCS. Mizzou's Max Scherzer, the three-time Cy Young winner, shut down St. Louis, throwing seven scoreless innings, 11 strikeouts for Max as he allows just one hit against the Cards. St. Louis wastes a great outing by Adam Wainwright. It was 1-0 in the eighth. But this Adam Eaton two-run double put the game out of reach on Saturday. The Cardinals fall 3-1. They're down 2-0 in the NLCS. 
and have just one run in the first two games. And uh, they have a pretty strong advantage right now, but you know they won two games at our place. We're going to go try to do at least that at theirs and uh, and get this thing right again. I got a lot of confidence in our hitters. I think our hitters are going to do something special in Washington. First pitch for tomorrow night's game three in Washington set for 638. The Cardinals ace Jack Flaherty takes the mound against Steven Strasburg and what could be a great pitchers duel. And they're still playing game two of the AOCS. The Astros and Yankees are tied at two in the ninth inning at last check. Justin Verlander with a quality start for Houston while the bullpen has dominated for the Yankees. New York leads the series one to zero. And finishing with high school football, we wrapped up week seven with some awesome action. KRCG 13's Tony Mullen has the play of the week nominees. Here are our top plays from week seven of the high school football season. Play number one, Miles Cheatham of Rockbridge. Outruns the Smith Cotton defense 61 yards for a Bruin touchdown, part of a 48-21 Rockbridge win. Play number two, the Fulton Hornets scored 62 points in a win over Southeast Friday night. Great effort by Hornet running back Zalen McNeil making some nifty moves. He'll take a defender into the end zone, capping a 51-yard touchdown run. And play number three, the Boonville Pirates, Tramel Coleman takes the pitch and there he goes, makes a nice cut and goes 50 yards for a touchdown. You can cast your vote for Play of the Week on our KRCG 13 Facebook and Twitter pages. Some Guys, great play. Yeah, absolutely. Now when I shoot high school football, got to wear layers. I had about three or four layers oh, on Friday. No. Elise, what do you yeah. have to tell us? Because Okay, so this week is going to be slightly warmer, but you know, active weather pattern.